Hello, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to continue to talk about some of the most missed questions on the math section of the GED. And today, specifically, we're going to focus on solving equations. So let's get started. So these are four different types of equations um, that are called one-step equations. They're the four different types that you can have, and I want to go through each of them to show you how you can go ahead and solve them. So one of the key things to do when you're solving for equations is you need to get your variable by itself. And to do that, you always look at the opposite of what's happening to your variable. So for my first example, x plus 5 is 12. I have my variable, and I'm adding 5 to it. So the opposite of adding 5 is subtracting 5. So minus 5, minus 5. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. These cancel x equals 7. So they're called one-step equations because they take one step to solve. There are equations that become more difficult. We'll get to that in a later video. So let's look at the next one. x minus 14 equals negative 21. So the opposite of minus 14 is plus 14. Plus 14. So 14 is cancel. x equals negative 21 plus 14 is going to be negative 7. When you're adding numbers, a little hint for you, the value of your number, whether it's negative or positive, will always be the same value as your bigger number um, that you're dealing with. So 21 is bigger than 14 because 21 is negative. My answer needs to be negative. All right, let's look at the next one. 4 fifths times x equals 20. So this one can be a little trickier because there's a fraction involved, but the process is still the same. I'm multiplying my variable by 4 fifths, which means to solve it, I need to divide my variable and my other side by 4 fifths. So divide by 4 fifths, divide by 4 fifths. There's a trick when you're dividing by a fraction. What you do is you take the fraction, you flip it, and you multiply. So on the left, these are just going to cancel out. So I know that's good. But on the right, I have 20 divided by 4 fifths, which is the same thing as 20 times 5 over 4. And that's a 1 down there. Make that a little clearer. Okay, so <clears throat> I've taken the 4 fifths, I've flipped it to make it 5 over 4, and now I'm going to multiply. When you multiply fractions, you go straight across. So 20 times 5 is 100, divided by 1 times 4, which is 4. You take 100 divided by 4, you get 25. And that's your answer. All right, so this last one, I have x divided by 12 equals 5.25. Well, the opposite of dividing by 12 is multiplying by 12. So I'm going to do that to both sides. Okay. On the left, it cancels out. And that's why you multiply by 12, so it will cancel out. And 5.25 times 12 is going to get you 63, which you can type into a calculator and get your answer. So these are one-step equations. They're the simplest of the types of equations. Now we're going to get into a little bit trickier one. But again, there's a formula for it. So let's take a look. So solve the following equation using any method, which basically means solve it however you want to. Um, there are a couple ways, but with this, 3x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 0. I know that because there's an exponent of 2 is the biggest exponent. It's a quadratic equation. And there's a formula called the quadratic formula that I'm going to use to solve it. It says x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And your a, your b, and your c are just the numbers that correspond here. So you have an a, a b, and a c. 
all you're doing is plugging those numbers into your formula and simplifying it. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative b is negative 6 plus or minus square root of b squared. b again is 6 minus 4 times a times c. a is 3. c is negative 9. Make sure you take the sign that's in front of your numbers every time. All over 2 times 3. All right, so this is going to take a few steps, but let's start simplifying the information. We still have negative 6 plus or minus square root. 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times negative 9 is negative 108 all over 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so that's the next step. Let's keep going, keep simplifying. I'm going to jump up here now. We have negative 6 plus or minus square root. 36 minus negative 108 is the same thing as 36 plus 108, which is 144 all over 6. Let's keep going. Negative 6 plus or minus square root of 144 is a perfect square. It's 12 over 6. So now I'm almost there. I have about one more step to do before I get my two answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into two different fractions. I'm going to do negative 6 plus 12 over 6, and I'm going to do negative 6 minus 12 over 6. That's what the plus or minus means. You have 1's plus, 1's minus. Negative 6 plus 12 is 6. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. So there's one answer. Negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18. And negative 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. So when you get to a quadratic equation, one that has the highest exponent of 2, the highest exponent of 2 actually tells you that you should have two answers. Um, so when you're Get to problems like this. There is a formula for it. It's on the reference sheet. I highly recommend using it. There are other ways to solve this, but I think in many cases, using the quadratic formula is the easier of them. So when you get to these types of problems and equations, always remember you can solve equations by doing the opposite operation. And when you get to quadratic equations, there's a formula. Plug in A, B, and C, start simplifying, and then you'll get your answers. Good luck. Add up when you visit us at GEDS.com. For future tips and videos, be sure to subscribe and follow.